Hey, my name is Brian. Welcome to my garage Bible study. You are what you eat. Oh, wow. So profound. I've never heard that before, at least not since junior high, that the lunch lady used to point to the sign on the side of the cafeteria wall. But, you know, really, you, you actually are what you eat, and there's actually spiritual ramifications to it. We're looking at that in the book of, of Daniel. Let me go ahead and read a section, and it'll go from there. Daniel is a Jew, and he's under oppression. All the Jews are under oppression from Babylon, and the king Nebuchadnezzar is trying to assimilate them to take away their culture and put them into his culture and take the best of the best, which Daniel was amongst the best of the best, is basically in this executive training program to rise up in the ranks of Babylon, the house of the senior official in Babylon. And let's see exactly how he tries to change his identity or change his habits and practices. Here's what it says in Daniel chapter 1. Verse 8 and following. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. You might remember, if you were with us last week, they're given a diet they're supposed to eat, eat the king's food and drink the king's wine. And he doesn't want to defile himself. Why not to defile himself? These foods, we don't have a lot of information about them, but Daniel believed it was going to get him on the wrong path. Let's keep going here. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord, the king who assigned your food and your drink. For why should he see that you were in worse condition than the youths who are of your own age? So you would endanger my head with the king. The eunuch's like, hey, Daniel, I understand you don't want to drink this stuff, eat this stuff, but... I'm afraid for my own life. Uh, how, how can we get this our way out of this? God has given Daniel some favor here because at least the eunuch representing Nebuchadnezzar is open. He's asking. He's inquiring. You know, when you're, in a, when you're in a pinch, ask God for favor. Ask him for a little help. And Daniel brings about amazing diplomacy. Many of us, we feel like our faith is being pushed. We're like, this is who I am and this is where I'll stand. No, I'm just going to, no, I'm not going to. Daniel, he is firm, but he's very diplomatic. Here, here's what he said. Daniel said to him, Test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food can be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. Why did Daniel not want to eat this food? There's theories on this, but we don't know exactly what it is. Is it that... All this food was prepared in an unkosher way, which is out of alignment with the dietary laws that the Jews had in the first five books of the Bible. Was it that? Was this unkosher wine? Wine in and of itself isn't evil. There's wine mentioned positively a couple times, a few times in the Bible. Jesus turns water to wine. So it's not that he's trying to eliminate all alcohol as inherently evil. And the foods, what's going on with the foods here? Are these unkosher foods? Are they, is it shrimp and pork? Maybe. Or it might just be he's resisting coming into the culture of the Babylonians and he doesn't want. I would just tell you right now, there is a culture that our country is trying to put on us and it relates to how you eat. Who you eat is who you are. The New Testament talks about unbelievers following the God of their bellies, just being driven by our bellies. We're not supposed to be driven by our appetites, by our physical appetites. We're supposed to be driven by our spiritual appetites. Alcohol is an increasing problem. Alcohol use is up about 20% since uh, COVID has, has kicked into gear. It's not just we're drinking more alcohol, maybe becoming alcoholics, but there's also this phrase that we now know of called gray drinking. Like, is this alcoholic or not? It doesn't fit in the bounds of alcoholism, but I don't know, it's a gray area. Like, can I have a drink at 11 a.m. in the morning when I'm at work, in my house, doing work on Zoom? Uh, I don't know. Can I have three drinks at night? Uh, can I have two drinks every single night? Don't know, but here's what I know. If you're a believer, you're going to have to have different alcohol consumption or different practices than the average person who has no boundaries around their alcohol consumption. Also, what you eat. Somewhere lost 
in the debate about vaccinations and should they happen, should they not happen. I'm, I, don't, don't judge me too much. I happen to have been vaccinated. I'm glad I, glad I have been, not judging you. If you haven't, you can make your own decision. But here's one thing I feel very strongly. Somewhere in the midst of all the vaccination stuff, we've lost sight that we as Americans are incredibly unhealthy. 48% of America would quantify or qualify as obese. We'd rather pop pills than actually change our holistic diet, which can alter type two diabetes versus just taking pills. We just see and we eat. And we want every meal to be an event, every meal to just send off our taste buds instead of meals actually giving us energy. I think what Daniel's doing here is saying, hey, look, your culture of consume, 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 your culture of eat all the finest foods, take if you can, it's not good for me. It's not good for us culturally. It's not good for us spiritually. It's not good for us physically. So let's test it. My way, we're just going to have water instead of alcohol, and we're going to have some veggies. And you can see whether or not we look healthy. And that's exactly what they do, and here's what it says. So he listened to them, the eunuch did in this manner, and he tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the steward took away their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. <laughs> so the eunuch gives all of them on the same diet. By the way, it says they're fatter here. That's different for them versus us. For us, when we hear fatter, we hear obese, overweight. It simply means a bit more plump, having more meat on your bones. It's healthy to have some meat in your bones. Having six-pack or eight-pack abs may look great when you're at the beach, but it doesn't serve you very well when there's no food for a few days. The people who are amazing survival experts and are awesome in the wilderness, they don't have six packs and eight packs. They have some meat on their bones because it's healthy because the body needs to digest fat instead of digesting your muscle, instead of digesting the muscle of your organs. I'm not telling you how to eat. I'm not telling you how to drink. I'm not telling you what to eat. I'm not telling you what to drink. All I'm saying is you better figure out what your personal philosophy is for your spiritual health for your physical health. And just like Daniel in this situation had to stand against culture, so you and I are gonna have to stand against culture because we have unhealthy drinking and eating habits in our culture and God cares about it. And when he sees us changing those habits, he knows we're walking in our identity of having a life that's fully served up to be in service to him instead of in service to my belly and my taste buds. You are what you eat, eat and drink in such a way that will prepare you for an effective, great life serving God.